Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 23. Machining the recess at each side of the flywheel. And finally skimming the outer edge using my Boxford lathe. This is a much finer process than previously shown, and you have to be careful not to damage what has already taken a considerable time to make. Here's a high speed clip running at 1000% to show what I had to do to get the flywheel to the stage you're about to see it in. This is footage from the previous episode running at a much higher speed and it's fascinating to see how easily the cutting tool removes the metal. I've always been fascinated by metalworking because it's such a solid medium to work with and I especially take my hat off to blacksmiths. It's a different technique to what I use some of these blacksmiths are incredible. Once I got the part to this stage, I drilled the hole and reamed it 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And after cutting the part to the length I wanted it to be using my bandsaw, here it is in the Boxford lathe to recess each side of the flywheel. Initially, I held the flywheel in the chuck, holding it by the central spigot, but this wasn't substantial enough, so I decided to grip the flywheel by the outer edges. And I push the flywheel into the chuck using a live center, and it's definitely running true. I'm using a round nose tool to recess each side of the flywheel, but I have to be very careful when I get to the edge, because the larger surface area of the tool contacts the work and it starts to chatter. It's okay if you're aware of this, but if you blindly ram the tool into the corners, it will damage the work. And because I've already put quite a bit of time and effort into making the part so far, I do not want to destroy it by being stupid, clumsy and careless. Currently, I'm almost halfway through my prostate cancer radiotherapy sessions. And thankfully, today I don't have a session. The next one is tomorrow. I've got into the routine over the years of editing and voicing over the videos almost every morning. But yesterday was a bit different. I had to be in Leeds, which is about 30 miles away, by 9 o'clock in the morning. And I didn't sleep well, got out of bed at half past five and felt fairly terrible and tired all day. And I voiced over yesterday's video late in the afternoon, when really I shouldn't have done. When I listened to playback, I could hear how tired my voice sounds. And yes, indeed, I was very tired. But hey-ho, not too many left to go. In this clip I've turned the flywheel around in the chuck and I'm using the round nose tool but I've altered the angle of it because I need to clean up the spigot. When initially I held the flywheel by the spigot in the chuck, it rotated and the chuck marked it. But as you can see, it's okay now. I'm continuing with the recessing of this side of the flywheel. How do I know how much metal to remove for the recesses at each side of the flywheel? Well, I don't so maybe one side might end up being a bit bigger than the other, or smaller, but it doesn't matter because you cannot see both sides of the flywheel at the same time. A poor excuse perhaps, but my calibrated eye tells me that I'm pretty close at both sides. The deeper the cut gets, the more dangerous it is at each end when the tool starts to chatter. But if you're careful, it's okay. You can stop the chattering somewhat if you slow down the lathe, but I really don't need to do that. One point I'd like to make is that I do not want a really good finish on the surface of the recess. I need to leave it slightly rough as a key for the paint that I'm going to apply to it. That is it for the round nose tool work. I've refitted the normal turning tool and I'm just taking another cut down the spigot. And now, as you can see, it's starting to look a whole lot better. I'm trying to copy the original Bernac Vulcan flywheel. That means I need to cut a groove in the spigot to take a drive belt. And here I'm using a very thin parting tool. It's a wonderful thing is this, I don't know why it doesn't break, but it doesn't. All I have to do is sharpen it periodically. To give it a fighting chance though, I am running the lathe slowly in back gear. And as you can see, I have been using some metal cutting lubricant. The final part of this operation is to use the round nose tool set at an angle to chamfer the edge. This side of the flywheel is now complete 
I'm going to turn it over though and turn the other side a little bit deeper and closer to the edge so that they match. As before, I trued up the work in the chuck by using a live center in the center hole to push it into the correct position. And it's running true enough for the job. The chuck jaws have slightly marked the outside of the flywheel, but I have a fix for this. Once again, I'm holding the flywheel by the spigot and I pushed it into place as usual using the live center. And what I'm doing is taking the finest of fine cuts on the outside edge. This gives a great finish, removes any chuck jaw marks, and I finish off the edges with a piece of wet to dry sandpaper. I think the finish is more than good enough. I will be putting it back in the lathe once I've painted the front and rear, and I'll probably polish up the outer edge at the same time. This finish and general quality of turning is more than good enough for now. I push the piece of steel that's going to be the crankshaft through the centre of the flywheel, then spun it in the engine frame. To demonstrate how well the crankshaft fits into the flywheel, I'm holding it in this position and the flywheel doesn't fall off. It's not an interference fit, it's just a very good fit. And it's quite incredible to think that it came from this rough lump of steel. All that's left to do now is to perform a hydraulic pressure test on the boiler, make a crank web and crank pin, and press the crank web onto the flywheel, drill and thread the flywheel spigot to take a grub screw, and that will be it. So there'll be at least two more episodes to go, possibly three with the steam test. I have to say I've really enjoyed this particular project. It's simple, yet very rewarding to see something take shape out of nothing. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.